Hey guys, this is White Manga, creator of Apple Black. Most of you have read it. Uh, if you haven't, please, there will be a link in the description so you can go read it uh, and check it out. You can come back and tell me what you think. Um, this is the third installment to the video. Uh, third, third installment to the series I'm doing where I'm teaching uh, people how to create manga pages. And this is where we're going to focus on toning the manga page. So this is the third part. If you're uh, just joining us, please you know, check the description for the first part and the second part where I focus on sketching in the first and inking in the second. Now the third one we're going to be toning in Manga Studio. So this is Manga Studio 5 and I'm just going through uh, going through and showing you guys you know the tones. These are layers that I have already created and you can see that they're tone layers. Um, for, uh, for those of you completely new to Manga Studio you might not understand what I'm saying but just try and follow the video and almost do exactly what I'm saying because it's not like this, this is something you can learn at one go this is something that takes time so try and follow me but I'll do my best to narrate and you know guide you guys to the correct path so we're on we're in like the uh, tone window where you can see like you know all sorts of tone with these are colored tones you can see the sky night or whatever and we're back to I clicked on the normal tones and those have you know all, all sorts of you can click on them right click on them and you'll be able to play with the settings and manipulate them to you know however you want them to uh, by the side so this is an example of how to use them so what I did was get um, what I did was use the lasso tool to create a square, a rectangular shape, you know, so I dragged that in and I just dragged the tone into that, into the selected area and that's how it works. Or another way to do it is using the magic wand and on the magic wand you select, select uh, it's, it's called select another layer for reference and how that works is anything you click on, it, 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 it'll select everything that has like everything within a within a loop if you will so as you can see that that uh, text balloon or text bubble or well, it's not really a bubble in this case because he's like shouting but y'all get the picture if you click on that it's gonna select the whole thing but just within the black lines so it's gonna click on everything within the black line if there's a if there's a hole within the line it's gonna go beyond that and you know stop at the next the next stop basically it's just gonna select everything within an within an area um, it doesn't matter it's not gonna matter what layer it is so here I'm going to show give another examples pick this tone and we drag it in and that is the reason why it it, um, it covered the whole page was because I hadn't selected anything uh, but this is how to if you do this and you do this on a new layer like a totally different layer if you do it that way and you delete the tone and this is on a new layer you've dragged in you drag the tone and it's on the new layer it's on the page and then you go delete delete all the the tone as I'm doing what I'm doing it I'm showing you two ways to do it for the first way I just did was actually selecting it and deleting uh, the selected area or you can do it normally with the eraser and just erase the tone but I'm just gonna select the whole thing because it's you know that way you don't miss a spot and you just clear everything but if you notice the layer then go back to normal the layer still acts at acts as if the tone is there and that way if you're on that layer anything you use at all any kind of tool any kind of pen anything you use at all is gonna act is gonna write in tone basically if you have a paintbrush, it's gonna brush in tone. If you have a pen, it's gonna use. It's gonna work like a. It's gonna ink in tone, and you can also erase it the, you know, the usual way as as, as if you are, you know, erasing a pen or a color or whatever. Um, so this is this is uh, this was it. This is a, a, another layer entirely, and so I basically did the same thing. Uh, but you know, just follow the follow the um, 
you know, follow the video and you see what I'm clicking on and everything will just, it'll, it'll make sense if you're doing everything that I'm doing. But basically, just, you know, just keep that in mind. So now I'm just going to select, I'm going to work with, because I already have some already created layers with different tones in them. And this, the layer I'm on right now is the layer I call clothes. And that's the layer that um, has the tone that I use to, well, basically tone clothes that have a certain color. So I'm uh, things that have, things that pop out a lot, like brown, red, you know, dark green, dark, dark blue. I tend to, or purple. I tend to tone them, and things like yellow, white, um, you know, light colors, basically. I tend to leave them alone. Uh, so the, the the jacket and his hair is toned because it's kind of like a dark red, and uh, part of the character up top screaming, you know, part of what he's wearing is kind of dark, uh, dark-ish purple. It's got, well... Light purple, but it's purple, so I, I, I'm i toning that as well. Now the character in the middle has white hair uh, and par partially yellow uh, a yellow shirt, so really nothing is going to be toned there. Uh, and you can see how I toned uh, the guy on re the guy with red as Ryuzaki at the um, at the extreme at the extreme right. Uh, I use the I, I use the selection tool. That's the I use the magic wand and I select it. You know I did it the the normal way where you select it and you make sure that the tool is on select um, on select another layer for reference and that way it selects everything within that you know it selects everything within uh, within within us within an area. As long as in, as long as it's like, as long as there aren't any any holes, because if there is a hole, it's gonna pop out and go, you know, go forward. Um, so we use the selection tool, and you know that that's how that worked. And basically, I'm gonna do the same thing for the whole video. Uh, you know, I'm gonna do the whole. Uh, I'm gonna work that way for the whole page. And remember, while it's on that layer, you can erase it and do whatever you want to do. Here, I am uh, using because it's kind of like a it's like a hole. They're in a very it's almost like a rabbit hole kind of thing going on here, where you can't actually see the end, uh, the um, you know the end of the hole. So it's just almost infinite. In a way, it's not, but it's almost. At least it, it seems that way. So I'm just giving like a really dark, a dark. Uh, I'm using the um, the brush tool to you know emphasize on that, and making it dark with the same with with the same tone. But I'm using a brush. So remember what I said. If you're on a tone layer, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. It's still going to come out in tone. So here, after that, I'm using the Selection tool again to select a, uh, a portion that is sealed. That uh, uh, selected. I'm um, selecting an area, and I'm filling in with filling in with um, the tone. Uh, most times, what you what uh, a tip I'll give for you guys is when you select something and you expand, you 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 make sure you expand it. Uh, that way, you have like uh, you know you make sure you get every you. you 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 don't leave out you don't miss spots that way and uh, you know it, it just works better that way you don't miss spots because sometimes if you just fill in you're gonna have some like white patches at, at the edges so you don't want that just so you maybe expand by two pixels and that will work so you make sure you if you see if you saw what happened with the the face as I filled in because I there was a hole in the hair the hair the the outline of the hair it got into the face. So I'm um, now you can there's so many ways to do that. You can actually go in, go to the layer of the line art, that's the you know, the ink, and you can kind of since it's not a toned layer, it's gonna be it's gonna write normally like ink basically, and you can just use the G Pen tool in Mog Studio and you just cover the hole and then you use the lasso tool again. Or you can just go straight on the um the tone layer. And you can just cover it and then use the lasso tool. Any way works. 
uh, just follow the video and I think uh, you'll be fine. So we're doing the same thing here, trying to make sure we cover every part that is red with tone. And sometimes even if there's a white patch and um, even afterwards, you can still go over it with, you know, maybe a pen tool and just go over the, the missed spots, basically. Here I made a mistake and the scar is actually supposed to be on the other side. So, you know, it's easier when, uh, when you're in Manga Studio and you see mistakes like this. They're easy to fix because all you have to do is erase. Uh, you make sure you're on the correct layer, which is the layer with the line art, and just erase, you know, the part you don't want and just redraw it. And really, no one's going to no one's gonna spot the difference or at least, you know, notice that there was a mistake made because it was going to look so clean. Another thing I like to do is uh, to tone the things that are closer to the screen. Uh, a lot of comics do this, and it's just to, uh, you know, bring more, um, let the eye focus on the uh, focus on the thing that is not toned. So in this case, um, Ryuzaki, that's the guy with the red hair, is where we want the eye to go. So that way we tone the other part, almost like covering it up, even though most times that person is the person talking. And sometimes it could be done, you know, in different ways where because that person uh, is toned, that's where we want the eye to, you know, go. So it really depends on how it's being used. In this case, this that's just how it's going to work here. Uh, but sometimes maybe there's like a character making a menacing look and there's nobody else in the screen and there's no background and the character's like completely toned. You know, clearly your eye is going to go into that direction. But, um, you know, in this case, we just, uh, it was to look, uh, focus on Ryuzaki. And we gener uh, artists generally do that when the character is close to the, you know, close to the screen or close to the shot or close, you know, closer to the viewer. So the closer the darker. Uh, some artists actually do it opposite and the closer the lighter and everything else is darker. You know, every, every artist has their style and preference. So feel free to tone however you want. So remember that this is a, even though this is a how to tone, I'm really just giving you guidelines and tips and just showing you how I do it. And uh, from, from, you know, watching this video, you should be able to, um, develop your own style and have your own way of doing things here I uh, just because I don't want the book to just blending blend in with all the other tone I just gave it a little you know a darker shade at the bottom just to let it pop out a little more and you know let it now I'm just letting it feel more like a book Nothing too crazy. And then after this, I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to create a layer. Well, well, not. Nah, I'm not going to create a layer. It's going to create itself because once you put in text, the text layer automatically creates a layer for itself. So when I create this text, basically, I'm then going to give it a little shade of gray and I'm going to rasterize it. And when you rasterize, all you have to do, how to rasterize is, you know, you go on the layer, you right click on the layer, 
and it'll be one of the options. And once you rasterize it, it basically becomes a layer that you can play with. As a text layer, you can't play with it. So now it's rasterized. I can change the color using the fill uh, fill bucket tool. And now I'll select it with the selection tool with the re uh, rectangle, you know, selection tool. Or you can use the magic wand and just click on each letter, uh, each alphabet. And when I once I do that, then I scale it down. And uh, ways to do that is once you've selected it. You go to edit at the top, and uh, it'll be one of the options. But you to uh, a quick way would be after you select it, it's just gonna be at the bottom, just below the selection. And one of the options would be to scale it. And now that I've scaled it, I just rotated it and put it there because the characters are upside down. You know, if you follow the video, you you should be fine. If you follow you if you follow what I did exactly, follow the mouse and all that, you should be fine. Uh, for those of you who are curious, I am using a, um, a Wacom tablet, so uh, real, real, not not the, the really expensive kind, the, the cheap kind. Uh, so you know, it was like a uh, sixty bucks, I think. So it's not too not that bad. Here I'm doing the same thing I did with the panel just above it, just be because that character is closer to the screen. I'm selecting, you know, the whole the whole thing just be, just hit the whole character and I'm gonna tone the whole character and I you know I made the layers of tone over his hair and his clothes invisible just not to mess with the selection tool and you know while I'm selecting him because it gets a little tricky if that layer is visible so I just made it invisible and now that I'm done uh, you know, toning the whole thing, I can make it visible back. Boom. You know, for the most part, you know, that's how it is. Um, here, I'm going to use the airbrush tool. After I, you know, uh, tone the whole thing with uh, another tone layer I have called trees because I normally use it for trees but I, I, I'm, I'm gonna use it here and I forgot to tone that you know so get that out the way uh, so back to the layer of uh, the trees we have that and just to give a, a shiny vibe, I'm going to use the airbrush tool, uh, the soft type, and I'm just going to make sure I'm uh, I choose a black, very black color, and just you know play with it and give it this shiny black vibe. Y'all can find better ways to do this, but this is just you know how I do it. I try to do things in a quick, in a quick way. Not quick to the point where it looks crappy, but you know. Now this is the part where I'm adding text. Now this is where my text is and my dialogue and narration is. It's in a Word document, and I just you know basically you know Word doc is it's a tip. A good tip would be to type in a Word document just because sometimes it helps you correct things and it gives you the correct spelling of things. And all you have to do is uh, copy and paste. And so when you copy, make sure you're on a text tool and you just paste and then you just work your way from there um, the settings on how to manipulate the 
the text will be on the left as you can see and there's a wide uh, there's a wide vast variety of you know text to use or you can go download your own font and uh, play with that the font being used here is called et Edo or Edo E D O basically uh, I normally use it for you know um, a lot of energy maybe when a character is shouting or you know screaming in fear or whatever um, and then for the normal text I, gen uh, I tend to use wild words please do not use Comic Sans it looks horrible at least in my opinion unless you really like Comic Sans then you go for it fine but you know generally it doesn't look good at least in my opinion and I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me it just looks this looks funny anyways so I use wild words I use uh, VTK animal I use um unrealized even impact Helvetica but you know for the most part especially when you know, for normal situations when characters are talking I use wild words so you can search that and download that because the, the that font doesn't come automatically now what I'm doing here is uh, I'm using that same selection tool maybe use uh, the magic wand and selecting the open space and this I am you know playing with the the airbrush and I'm going on a, and make sure this is on a separate layer and this layer must be above all you know above all layers. It doesn't really have to be above all layers because you're using the selection tool and it's only going to show it's only good the, the, the tool is only going to work on the selected areas and after that I click on the um, decoration tool and after that I click on the de decoration tool and I uh, I click on the um, let me see you can really use any one you want but the one I use is called cross-hatching tone scraping uh, for the one I'm using in this video right now is called gauze cloud I generally use that for clouds but I'm just playing with it for now and just trying to see how it looks but generally you want to use the at least for what I'm doing here you want to use cross-hatching tone scraping uh, so that's what I use and it, it, it just gives it this it just gives the background it just makes it get, just just doesn't um, it works with the background basically it just doesn't leave it white sometimes if you just leave it white it just makes everything feel a little emotionless or I don't know how else to, I, don't, I don't know how to put it but sometimes I do leave backgrounds white and it works but not all the time not in this case because you know you're saying something that you know means something I just feel it has this menacing vibe and I feel uh, and I feel what it, this kind of tone in the background works just fine um, there are other shonen type mangas that use this technique um, the re uh, for, for what, what, ha what just happened was uh, when I selected uh, it got into the character's hair and that's why you could see um, part of the airbrush going over the character's head and that's you know, that's Simon tired of saying the character going over Simon's head and you know I just didn't feel like you know covering the holes in the hair so I just kept on working, and when I was done, I went. Oh, well, you can always erase. That's why you know, you know. That's why I like doing things. Uh, that's why I like working digitally. Anyways, then we do the scraping thing, and the scraping thing only works if um, the tool is on transparent. So you have black, white. You know, if the color is on transparent, and that's when it'll work. So you do that. You know, you work with that. And you clean, and you, so you make sure you're on the layer where you the, you're on the layer that's using the airbrush. Uh, so using the airbrush is going to be on black, but when you're using the tone scraper or um, d uh, the decoration tool, and you're on um, cross hatching tone scraping, you want to make sure it's transparent. 
and then you can go over it. And that way you don't have to mess with anything. Um, right now, after all this, uh, we're pretty much done. And I'm going to put in the text and show you how everything is going to look. And also give you an example of uh, other manga pages I've done to give you an idea that you know if you master you know manga studio these are the kind of pages you will be able to pull off and probably even better okay guys I know what you're thinking um I really breeze through a lot of things uh, that was done on purpose just so you guys can see some of the cap uh, capabilities of the software manga studio and that way you can watch me use it and anything that I did that wasn't clear to you, you can leave it in the comments and it will probably be its own video in the future. For, for instance, maybe if there was something I did with the text or if there was something I did uh, with the tone or speed lines, focus lines or anything like that. You can leave it in the comments and there will be like a separate video that will focus on that solely. Uh, so I just wanted to, you guys to really see how I work with Manga Studio and, you know, see the possibilities and it, with future videos I'll be able to, you know, show more. For the meantime, the next video is probably going to be a more practical tutorial, uh, maybe how to draw backgrounds or, you know, something about action scenes and or, or something of that nature. Uh, that'll be the next video, so please stay tuned. Um, so you can also, uh, like I said, leave a comment on what tutorial you want tutorial you want to see next, or if there was a tutorial you, you within this that you want me to see go into more detail, you can leave that in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, please like, favorite, and subscribe for support. Any form of support uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you like the manga you're seeing and you're wondering where you can go read it, like again, this is Apple Black, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description for y'all to go check it out. There was a site, uh, Saturday AM, and uh, that's where Apple Black is. That's Apple Black's home, basically, so you can go check that out and check the site out as well. There are some big things, um, big things that are going to be happening there. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, any questions? You leave in the script. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, tutorial you want me to see, or want me to do? Leave a comment. Uh, tutorial you want me to go into more detail, even though I went over it in this video. Leave in the comment. Like, favorite, subscribe. Blah 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 blah. And I think we're good. Thank you for watching um, this short series. And I will be back real soon. <laughs> A little Mark Curly jab.